Welcome to the Genealogy Radio Show, the radio show that's keeping you in the loop. And we're going to have a bit of a new departure in relation to the Genealogy Radio Show in the fact that we will start sharing our sources and videotaping them as well and having them for listeners as well. So because sometimes you can take in so much with a talk and not everything. So this week's show is all about online talks and podcasts for history, genealogy and local studies. And it's not doesn't cover everything, but we'd like to do this every month just to keep people up to date as to what's happening, especially with an online world very much taking dominance at the moment. And if you want some quality history and genealogy and local studies to listen to, this would be our recommendations from the Genealogy Radio Show at Radio Cork of Ashkin. So there are a number of bodies that are doing talks at the moment and have some talk archives. The Genealogy Radio Show is one of them. And this is usually linked on a page on my website where we have, and also out through Mixed Cloud and so on, where we podcast out each week. But we have a set of links of over 50 to 60 pages and seven series now. So it's very useful archive to have indeed. And my name is Lorna Maloney and I have done this show for some time. So we very much really love being able to do this for you. I'm going to start with the National Library of Ireland where they do a number of talks and exhibitions and they, they you know, we know them from the parish registers and other sources online, but there's more to them. There's images, there's, uh, you know, a whole range of sources that you, you can look at, but you don't necessarily have to be in the country or be visiting on, in person and so on. So they have a, a talk coming up from Turmoil to Truce, which is a Zoom talk. And we have a link for that on our presentation, or you can go to the National Library of Ireland and just look for their talks. And it's from Turmoil to Truce, a Zoom talk, and it's photographs of the War of Independence. And that's taking place on Thursday, the 18th of November at 11 a.m. Now, I will contact them and ask them how they archive, you know, how they link to their past talks, because that's something that would be of interest to people perhaps who can't make the Thursday at the 18th of November at 11 a.m., but would like to capture that talk and so on. They have another one coming up from Peace Through Poetry Mindfulness Event on the Thursday, the 25th of November at 1 p.m. And that's join Ruth and Lista from the National Library of Ireland for this online event exploring mindfulness in the poetry of Seamus Heaney and W.B. Yeats. So they'll share lines from the poetry of Heaney and Yeats that bring us solace before inviting participants to share the lines that they find soothing. And you can book that. So that's a nice mix of what's happening here with literature and history and so on. I wanted to cover the Clare Roots Society because on looking at what they were offering and for the future, they have a wonderful talk um, on the O'Briens of Drumoland coming up, which may be of interest to you. And I'll certainly be sending that link out to people as well that I know that would be interested in the O'Briens. And they have upcoming meetings and past lectures. So just to let you know what, what happens with those, you know, you have a range of different talks going on there as such. So for that, their meetings and lectures, their upcoming lectures will be via Zoom only in support of the Department of Health and Government's announcements about safeguarding and protecting public health against the COVID-19. And on Thursday the 18th at 8pm through Zoom, you have the O'Brien's family of Dremoland Castle by Colm Liddy. So I'm going to be alerting all to that in Dremoland because I'm the genealogist of Dremoland Castle. The O'Briens of Dremoland were one of three branches of a family which could trace its ancestry back to an ancient king of Ireland and possessed even in this period very considerable estates in Clare. Such qualifications were conducive to a rather prickly sense of pride 
O'Brien's father was often reported as pressing himself upon the castle's attention, at an attitude which, as it went with the qualities of thinking well of himself, being a frequent and tiresome and great un ungraceful speaker and having an indigested fund of knowledge did not meet with great success. Thus, when his son succeeded in the baronetcy and returned himself for Ennis, family pride needed some palliative. O'Brien opposed the uni union and having lost his seat for Ennis by ballot in 1801, determined to become a member for Clare and sole patron of Ennis. In 1802, he succeeded in both objectives after an expensive contest for the county and after declare, declaring himself a supporter for the government. So, you know, that's wonderful. Now, please be advised the Clare Root Society membership subscription has been waived until further notice, and they have a wonderful set of recordings in Zoom through their Clare Root Society and YouTube channel. And they also have Dr. Kieran Riley, Famine Eviction, Zoom recording. That was the talk on October 2021. Aileen Wynne, Irish Ge Ireland Genealogy Projects, a free and on you underused online resource, Zoom recordings, and there's slides as well. April 2021, Sean Murphy, the Registry of Deeds and its Records. There's a Zoom recording of that. Cahill Crow, the sinking of the SS Clonlara. Dr. Joe Power, Claire and the War of Independence, a Zoom recording. Eamon Healy, researching workhouse ancestors during the famine, famine a case study of Gort Poor Law Union, County Clare and Galway, 1845 to 1851. Wonderful source there. Gislin de Reg, PhD, the notable knownness of Ennis. Uh, Timothy J. Maher, How Your Family Fits In, Family History and the Broader Narratives of I Ireland, Irish and Irish American History. I'll certainly be uh, tapping into that. Larry Brennan, The Laneways and Bow Ways of Ennis. Joe Power, Guerrilla War in Ireland. Jane Holler and Ryan, em um, Emigration to Ellis Island and their sources mentioned in this lecture. Steve Dolan. 18th century Clare News. And what I see is the departure into Zoom, which is now absolutely wonderful that we have this. Because when I gave this talk, I didn't have the, you know, there wouldn't have been a Zoom talk on it and so on. So I'm so pleased that there is now. And we've, you know, these are some of the positive aspects of what's going on for our, our basic things of what's happening, you know. So I am delighted with that. And what I think we need to do as well is we need to kind of realize that there is a wonderful kind of set of things going on in relation to things. And we have also moving on. So Claire Roots has an absolutely superb archive there of sound. And I'd like to tie into that with contributing to what we're going to do with presentations and pointing people in the right direction and get into the world of YouTube. I have a new team starting with me in January and I hope they'll get me into the land of YouTube and be able to do all that and bring it up a step in these uncertain times where it's difficult to get out and we'd like to support and do our bit for getting uh, people the information that they need. History Ireland, Ireland's History Magazine, I wouldn't like to depart without drawing on that because it's a wonderful source. And they have Ireland and the Greater War in Europe, compare and contrast. They have a talk on there and archived. While there were optimistic hopes that the First World War or the Great War would be the war to end all wars, post-1918 Europe, including Ireland, instead experienced a Greater War, a series of civil, border and ethnic conflicts that lasted at least until 1923. How did Ireland fit into that paradigm? Was it typical or atypical of the period? History Ireland editor Tommy Graham in discussion with Niamh Gallagher, Robert Gerworth, John Horn and Bill Kassan. So a lovely uh, roundtable talk there or a discussion and so on. The Grand and Royal Canals, one of the unsung successes of the 1998 Good Friday Agreement was the establishment of the All-Ireland or All-Island Body Waterways Ireland with responsibilities for canals and waterways. But what drove the construction of the Grand and Royal Canals in the first place 
How important were they to the Irish economy at their height? Why did they decline? And what are the prospects for their renaissance under the new dispensation? So again, there's related questions for Tommy Graham in discussion with Eugene Coyle, David Dixon, Nuala Riley, and Alexander O'Fallick. So good, good one there. A wonderful one here that I'll be getting out in, in messages and bits and pieces to listen to the author Colm Kenny, Ken Mayer, History and Survival, Father John O'Sullivan and the Famine Poor. So this reveals the story of the remarkable man, Father John O'Sullivan, in his bids to help starving people during the Irish Great Famine. He reveals their terrible experience inside and outside one of the national workhouses, and he throws new light on the relationship between class and religion and poverty in Ireland before the independence. John O'Sullivan lived from 1807 to 1874. He was an independent minded priest who clashed with bishops and landlords. He kept journals that have not been published and the author, Colm Kenny, mines these and other sources, including eyewitness accounts, UK archives and Kerry Workhouse minutes for new insights into aspects of Irish society, including politics, proselytism and the status of women. Colm Kenny BL is a professor emeritus of Dublin City University, a journalist and an honorary bencher of King's Inns. He was awarded the Irish Legal History Society's gold medal, and his books include Histories of King's Inn, an account of Irish emigration to the USA, and most importantly, a biography of Arthur Griffith. So well worth looking at for genealogy purposes with the account of Irish emigration to the USA. And it's through researching for the genealogy radio show that I get to keep up to date and keep up to speed and so on. So the first Irish cities, an 18th century transformation, author David Dixon in conversation with Tommy Graham, the untold story of a group of Irish cities and their remarkable development before the age of industrialization, a backward corner of Europe in 1600. Ireland was transformed during the following centuries, and this was most evident in the rise of its cities, notably Dublin and Cork. David Dixon explores 10 urban centres and their patterns of physical, social and cultural evolution and relates this to the legacies of a violent past. And he, this first Irish cities is an 18th century transformation published by Yale University Press. So this talk is a, is a wonderful account of the 18th century in some cases, and that's really good to have because sources are getting slim in some cases at this stage. I couldn't leave this show today without looking at the wonderful work of Tipperary Studies, Preserving and Promoting the Past. Absolutely beautiful work. And they have a series of 15 lectures. They got that got off to a flying start with Dr. Margaret Murphy of Carlow College speaking on the Templar Order in Ireland and more particularly the manner of Clonulty in County Tipperary. The manor of Clonulty was granted to the Knights Templar sometime after 1170 and was dissolved in the early years of the 14th century. This account of the preceptory compiled at its dissolution gives us a snapshot of the wealth and farming practices of the order. And that was called Raising. So you can go on to SoundCloud. The link is on my presentation for this today, which I hope to get the, through to YouTube in some way, Raising Revenues for the Holy Land. So. That's it for our sources today. And um, I just think that it's really worthwhile to start looking at what we're doing here in relation to the genealogy radio as, as well. We've gone for over seven years now. I mean, it's hard to believe that we, we're, we're celebrating so many shows and we're looking so looking forward to our series in January, starting with our new team from the co-op at the University of Limerick who contributed so greatly during the course of this with lots of fun ideas and exciting things coming up. So today we looked at Clare Roots, we looked at the National Library of Ireland, we looked at History Ireland and we looked at Tipperary Studies. We looked at four places where we could get some very good quality history, local studies and genealogy connections and bits and pieces. I mean, Claire Root's generation or generosity in putting up their archive like that is absolutely wonderful. And we can see that COVID-19 is not without its advantages. 
that suddenly we can get this wonderful information out worldwide. And if we learn how to support it and put it together and integrate it, we've got a wonderful package. And that would be our goal to do this on one clean platform in 2022. So I'll leave it for today. And that's all for today. All our shows are podcast out from wonderful Radio Cork Bashkin. And it was a pleasure to have the show today. And we're looking forward to talking to you next week and podcasting out again. Thank you for listening.